All oh, right, hello and welcome to another episode of Invalid Entry. I have to remember the name of the channel because this is the second one that we're doing. Uh, today I want to show a technique which we're going to be using in later episodes, uh, which is basically using Pygame to generate OBS overlay. So on the screen right now you should be able to see a quite cyberpunky 1980s uh, green neon thing moving around the screen. I'm going to show you very quickly how to put that together. But more importantly, I'm going to show you how I got that into an overlay in OBS. Um, originally, I was thinking how to do this video in a way which was a bit cool. Um, and sorry, let me just <laughs> let me just get rid of that out of the way completely for a moment. Um, just put it up there. Now, the cool thing about this actually is that because it, it's generating all the time, if anyone wants to take this video and chop it up for any reason, then that will actually glitch. So it acts as like a unique timestamp on it. What I'm basically going to do is I'm going to make a Pi game window. It's going to have uh, a minimum um, size to it. I actually want the size to be as close to what I'm going to render because then I don't want OBS to resize it on the fly when I'm recording. So I might have gone for like a 200 by 200 gone for square as well because it makes my maths easier just because I'm doing this circular triangle thing if I was to do rectangles I had to work out which is the shorter side or make make the dimensions differently so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically imagine there's a circle I'm actually going to imagine there's three circles in inside the, the frame that I'm working on and I want to calculate a point in that circle uh, and earlier I sat down I worked out the maths I went back to basic high school geometry and went you want to actually work it as a vector. So instead of working out this point, what I'm working out is the distance from the middle, which is really easy because I know the diameter wants to be just less than the actual um, uh, width. So the high, the uh, um, radius will be half the width minus one or two, just to, just to bring it in a bit. Um, and then basically I want to work it as a vector as how far across and then how far up it is. And then basically it's going to be the the, the vertical distance is going to be the sign of the angle. We're also going to work in radians because it makes the math nice and easy and the computer just doesn't care. Opposite of the hypotenuse, turn that around, it's going to basically be sign the angle times hypotenuse equal opposite. So what I'm basically doing is I'm going to keep of three numbers. I'm going to have um, a, an angle A, B and C. I'm basically going to add a tiny amount onto each number on each frame so it gets a nice animation up. And then if it goes over 2 pi, I'm going to reset it to 0. Or the one that's counting down, if it goes to 0, I'm going to reset it to 2 pi, just so it goes back to the start of the circle. It's basic maths. Don't worry about this. Not really important unless you want to make cool spidey thing. So basically, this point's going to go that way. That point's going to go that way. It's going to be nice and easy. Uh, Locate the calculations. Draw lines between it. In fact, Pi Game actually has an even better thing called Polygon. I can just throw all the three coordinates at it and it does it for me. So that was the idea. Implementation, very much like I said it showed last time, I'm basically going to implement a Pi game ultralight framework. I imported random because I wanted to start at a random point. Um, uh, it just helps it not have the same iteration every time I run the program. It makes it a bit more fun. Um, what's really important about this one actually is that in the flags here, uh, I, I'm having a problem with multiple displays. Uh, where Pi Games like to put it on the wrong display all the time, so I've had to force my display. On this one, I've had to set the flags to no frame. And the reason for that is when I capture it, I don't want there to be the title bar in the frame we capture, I just want it to be the animation itself. Uh, I got my alive, I got my three um, um, angles I'm going to use, and then I've got my hypotenuse. And again, I could have put them in an array, I could have made this data and said you use n number of polygons and made it all generic, but I didn't want to. Just keep it nice simple, copy and paste the code out. Really, really important here that you actually do this because yes, I can control see the shell that's running it, but this is this is where this comes into play. Because I don't have the Chrome, I can't hit close anymore. So I can't actually ever go into this because I, I can never actually trigger that. Uh, so this is actually going to quit. I'm just going to select the window, and just tap a key, and it will close nicely. So basically, if it's alive, or oh, the reason, by the way, someone asked me why do I do alive here is because well, if I'm quitting, I've already called display quit, and then I go in here and try and write to the screen. I actually get errors. So even though I've quit, I then get an error. I believe that's what happens. Anyway, it's good to say that if it's alive, just don't continue. I don't want this to be inside these fours because this actually might loop multiple times if there's several event pie game events going on, such as the mouse running on the screen or something like that. 
So I'm going to shift my, my angles very, very slightly. Because these are radians, I don't want to be shifting it by one because there's, there's uh, six in an entire circle. So you want to shift it by some minor value. I want these numbers not to be... They want to be relatively prime, so they don't want to be um, multiples of each other. So you don't want to use 0 0.2 point or 0 0.02, 0.04, and 0 0.96, because if you do that, you'll find that it goes back to the start and you'll, you'll, you'll end up with symmetry. So if you want symmetry, use multiples of each other. If you don't want symmetry and you don't want it resetting, uh, use slightly out numbers that will generate you a slightly different thing. Again, goes over 2 pi, go, gone away around the circle, just reset it, or if it gets back to 0, reset it. And then I work out the coordinates. So these are actually two calculations. There's one there, which is working out how far across it is. And of course, this will go negative. So it's, and I want to offset it by the center point. Um, it, just so people know, the top left is actually, or actually on this screen, up here is zero, zero. And then you're counting across and down. So I want to, here will be 100, 100, because I've got 200 by 200 square. And it will, it will work out nicely. If you actually do the maths and want it to go in a particular thing, you have to know which way is positive and negative. I don't actually care in this situation because it's going to go positive and then it's going to be negative once it gets round again and then it goes back to being positive again. So it's going to that loop all the time. This is the thing which actually draws the line. Then I say throw it at the display. And I'm running at 10 frames a second at the moment. I could increase that. 10 is actually giving a little bit of a jerky effect, which gives it a nice 1980s CRT vibe about it. Uh, I was running higher. Now, actually, this is really important. I want that to run slower than you might think, because I want to keep the load down. And again, I keep the load down by calculating some of these things. Like, um, I don't need to divide the width in two every single time. Now, actually, divide by two is a really fast operation. Slash slash here, so I don't have to do. Otherwise, it will give me a float, and I have to cut the float back to being an int. So slash has two there, um, but I, so I can optimize this a bit more to be even faster. But I want it to sleep because I, I I'm probably if I'm doing this for real and actually being a proper YouTuber and playing you know Modern Warfare, then I want my game to have CPU cycle. So I don't want my overlay to be taking up my my CPU because I'm still you know OBS is still trying to stream the game's still trying to run. This is an extra thing that you don't really want to be wasting on your CPU uh, available resource on calculating. So putting this at like 10 frames a second or even slower, depending on what animation you're going to go for, uh, you may even be able to find ways that you can blit it even so in this, so it only speeds up now and then. Um, so if you've got some animation running, which you can basically be doing slower frames per second, but then if an event happens, like you get a kill or something, then you do the animation after that. But we'll talk about that in later videos when we start integrating with cooler stuff that goes on. That's my program. Really simple program. Lots of copy-pasting going on here because I haven't bothered to refactor the code to be dynamic. So basically, it's just calculating a coordinate and throwing it at the screen, throwing polygon. This is the only line doing any actual work uh, for actually rendering. So when I run it, it looks something like this. And let me just cancel that. Um, okay, get it. I'm going to again. As you can see there, it, it generates location. Now, because I haven't got that chrome around, I haven't got that full screen, I can't drag this, I can't resize it. So it does give me a few problems when I'm using it. Now, this is where the fun bit comes from. As you can see there, this is now in sync with the animation in the top right uh, over here. Bring it back in somewhere dark or that screen maybe. You can see it's, it's actually that screen. Let me bring my OBS on to render and then we get a nice infinite, infinite windows. Um, what we do is, uh, I'm going to show you this from scratch, I'm going to delete that and add that back in. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a window capture, add source. Um, I, I want to add a new source. Uh, give it a name like triangle, triangle, triangle. Okay, we're back. Uh, what you find is if you are recording OBS with OBS, it may crash OBS. I'm sure there's probably a loop there I shouldn't be doing of recording OBS with OBS. But anyway, um, so add new source. Uh, tri triangle thing, spell it right this time. Add source. This one, I'm going to select my Python Pygame window. Now, you can actually give it a name. Um, in Pygame, you can actually give it a name, and then you can do better matching, saying it has to match the correct name and all the rest of it. Hit done. Notice there's no Chrome on the import, uh, and you get this thing, which is annoying. So you imagine putting that over the top of your game, or your viewers will love you forever. Um, obviously, that's not the end of it. So what we actually want to do is down here, there is a you right you right click on it in the middle. And you say filters, 
and in here you add a filter and the filter you want is chroma key you might scroll down for it and it's fine to leave it chroma key you want the color screen to be custom if you use black now obviously i don't want the green to be filtered i want it to be the black that's filtered out uh, it doesn't look very good because the similarity is at like 400 so as i turn this similarity down because i'm being very stark in my colors i've gone full green and black there's no other colors available um, then basically I can turn it all the way down there. The smoothest don't need to worry about, colour spell don't need to worry about because I want that kind of cyber effect going on. Drop that in there and all of a sudden we now have our 200 by 200 image capture going on. And I can, I can scale it down the bit and shove it, you know, maybe this is my little animation for the bottom right that does a cool like blinking eye or something like that. Um, so yeah, now I've got a really cool simple animation going on that's customised my stream and, and really that's the technique um, in a nutshell. Uh, as soon as I move it off and because windows should be open uh, that that is it so all these you want to run these on your other monitor where you're not gaming um, and it will just run behind the scenes it will keep up the streaming um, and really at this point it, your imagination is up to you so I will be using this technique in future videos I will be showing you how we do a cool heart rate monitor where you actually have your your you know your heart rate Garmin heart rate on your chest and it will actually display your heartbeats almost live um, and we'll be doing some cool stuff around that but it's all down to this generate some cool art in Pygame or any other language that does it you could do it in Unity or something like that um, import that as an OBS chroma key out your colours have fun with it if you like this video please hit like and subscribe um, we are building the channel we're currently at 6 subscribers we're at that point of the channel where I think I know all the subscribers personally which is a wonderful thing uh, if you don't like it, then then don't tell anyone about it. Uh, that'd be my hint. Go go do something worthwhile in your life. But um, if you do like it, yeah, tell your friends. Thank you very much. Uh, and yeah, hit me up with a comment in the chat below, or or yeah, whatever. And as I said, because there's six of you that I think I know personally, um, yeah, we'll, we'll probably meet up one day and have a, a barbecue or something. I think that's usually what I do at this point in the channel's life.